Z1620 here and I'm super excited to guys bring you another video in my series where we go through every single weapon inside of Modern Warfare 3 to see just which ones are the most viable for you inside of Modern Warfare 3 zombies. And yes, this does include all of the MW2 weapons, aftermarket parts and conversion kits. So welcome in and today I wanted to talk about the update that comes to the game every Wednesday, which is something I really look forward to because they update our weekly challenges on Wednesday. So for weekly challenges week two, we have a Jack Jawbreaker, which is an aftermarket conversion kit for the MW2 KV broadside shotgun, which turns it into a battle rifle, which is absolutely insane. So. Uh, we, of course, had to unlock that, which I did yesterday. Uh, so it converts this shotgun into a hard-hitting, auto-firing battle rifle. You can see what the Automa, the uh, kit does to it. So we're going to be checking out the KV broadside today with the aftermarket conversion kit on it to see just how it performs in all three tiers, taking on bounties all the way through with and without mags of holding. So stick around to the end of the video if you're interested to see how mags of holding works on the KVB broadside with the new aftermarket conversion kit as well. We have a brand new event in uh, MW3, which is the Blaze Up event. This is the blueprint for the WSP Stinger you get for completing the event, which I have done. So I thought I'd take it into the firing range and just give you guys a quick little preview of what it looks like. And uh, this is the build that comes with the Daymares uh, WSP Swarm. Sorry, not Stinger. WSP Swarm is what you get. And that is for the Blaze Up event, which I have finished. So let me know down in the comments where you guys are with the Blaze Up event. If you have finished, if you think the uh, blueprint is cool. I definitely like the camo on it. I think it's pretty cool. It's animated. And it works on uh, both sides. So that's pretty cool. It does work as well if you put camos underneath it. So that's pretty awesome. But if you guys are new around here and you like to see how weapons work inside of Modern Warfare 3 Zombies, you're definitely in the right place. Make sure you subscribe, turn on the bell notifications so you don't miss out any future uploads from myself on Modern Warfare 3 Zombies. As well, down below in the description you will find the link for my stream and I would be absolutely honored to have you guys tune into the streams. I do play a lot of custom zombies on stream so if you're inter interested in that stuff it would be awesome to have you guys join us in stream. But without further ado, let's get to the week 2 conversion kit aftermarket part for the KV broadside from MW. W2. Welcome into another video. I am Z1620 and super excited to be able to bring you guys this video today. Also, before we get into things, I definitely want to give you guys a big thank you for all of the recent support on my content. It has been absolutely amazing. We are fast approaching 2,000 subscribers on the YouTube channel and we have uh, crossed a milestone for me which was 1620 subscribers for Z1620 so super epic and I can't thank each and every one of you guys enough from the bottom of my heart none of this is even possible without any support from all of you so thank you now let's spawn in we're going to be checking out the KVB broadside or the KVB KV broadside wow that's hard to say shotgun from MW2 with a brand new aftermarket conversion kit that is unlocked through yesterday's update the week two challenges so you got to complete five of those challenges to unlock the conversion kit which i've gone ahead and done so the first thing we wanted to do was spawn in we're going to put on our perks nothing but the perks and um go and find ourselves a bounty however i did not have dead shot today when i spawned in and i've seen you in the comments uh, mentioning that I definitely need Deadshot as it makes a big difference. So we switched it up a little bit today and the first thing I went to do today was grab Deadshot. And then we went and found ourselves a bounty contract inside of tier one to go and see how this shotgun slash, I guess, battle rifle for the KV broadside works inside of tier one dealing with a bounty contract. And we had a Mangler, which was our first one. Now, I'm, I was unsure if this is being inconsistent with the hits or or what was going on when using this because i did notice that some of the critical hits were doing really good damage some of the critical hit critical hits were not doing such good damage so i feel like there's going to be an update to this aftermarket kit to make it a little bit more consistent um maybe you guys let me know in the comments if you're feeling the same if you have this unlocked and you've had a chance to use it um i certainly did notice that throughout my run today so uh, I'm still a little undecided on whether or not um, this, this weapon is going to be completely viable for you guys inside MW3 Zombies. But stick through the video as uh, my tune definitely changes a little bit as we get through the video for sure. So you can see here we're finishing off the Mangler in Tier 1 uh, doing some nice critical damage. But again, like I, f I just feel this gun is a little bit inconsistent with the critical hits as... Um, 
as you hit the critical shots, I don't feel like the damage you're getting is consistent from critical shot to critical shot. So it definitely does really good damage when you get those um, consistent critical shots in. I feel like the damage is definitely there. Um, however, as you can see, like just some of them just don't seem to be doing much damage at all, the critical shots. And some seem to be doing a, a just an, a lot of damage. So it was really interesting to see. I was I was confused as what was going on. The next thing to do is, of course, to go and put Pack-a-Punch on the weapon. Um, and I love this event camo we got. Um, it's animated, and I think it's one of the best ones we got. Zombie hands and flames is totally one I absolutely love. So we wanted to keep that for this run. We went and meleeed the Pack-a-Punch machine in order to keep a camo on our weapons. And then we Pack-a-Punched it. So now we're Pack-1 again. No ammo mods, no legendary tools, and uh, no anything on the gun except for pack a punch and we picked up another bounty inside of tier one which was a mangler which was a perfect comparison so i was excited that we got another mangler for this one and i was curious to see what would happen if we focused on the um, you know his cannon that he shoots us with to see if that would maybe increase the the critical damage that we were getting to the manglers because again like i said it just feels a little bit inconsistent i feel like when you're it registers properly i feel like the the critical hits in this gun is going to be absolutely amazing However, when it doesn't, I feel like this is um, not the greatest weapon. It could be, you know, like we're shooting a pea shooter at the moment. So it, it's it's different. It's definitely something um, I wasn't expecting to see, you know, um, a conversion kit to take a, a shotgun to a battle rifle. Like, that. that's just absolutely crazy. Um, so I was really interested to see how this weapon works. Regardless of how the bounty contracts went and how strong it felt, I was still really curious to see. I feel like this weapon um, has got a lot of potential. I'm just not sure if it's consistent enough with the, the damage output for it to be, you know, one of the ones that I'm going to rock all the time when I play. But it definitely changes up the, the gunplay for sure in your games. I mean, a green tool. Oh, my goodness. They just, that needs to get out of the loot pool, in my opinion. Just completely out. Take it out. <laughs> we got Napalm on the gun now and Legendary Tool because I wanted to go and find ourselves another bounty and see just how well Legendary did against a uh, bounty contract inside of Tier 1, considering that the first two bounty contracts we had in Tier 1, you know, took a bit. They were doing quite a bit of inconsistencies with the damage so i was curious to see if pack a punching uh the weapon with legendary and napon was going to make you know a really dramatic difference taking out a bounty inside of tier one since i had such a struggle with them so far and again if you can see the damage is just not consistent so i'm not sure what's going on with that you can see the the chunks of health that coming off him are not consistent with each and every bullet that hits him so I'm, I'm still unsure what's up with that. Um, I got lucky trying to find a bounty. It popped up right beside me, which was absolutely amazing. Uh, there was a real, real struggle, I'll be honest with all of you guys, it, to find bounty contracts inside of Tier 2 today. I wasted probably 20 minutes in-game trying to find bounty contracts. So when this one self-completed itself, I was really quite upset. We got stamina up out of that, which wasn't bad because I was really low on perks for today. And then, as I said, the struggle to find bounty contracts was real. So we just went and picked a cargo contract inside a tier two, hoping that I could maybe, you know, get that after I completed the cargo contract to possibly spawn me in a bounty contract. I know you can cancel it and uh, cycle through, but there was just so many players around. I just felt like this was probably going to be the best way to go about doing and getting myself another bounty contract. We got PhD Flopper out of that. And now, chat, be prepared. This is probably the most epic theft of a contract from of a, from another player i think i've ever seen i had this bounty marked i was sure i wasn't gonna get it the team was there they were literally on the phone and i just somehow managed to scoop it from that poor player i felt bad but the struggle to get you guys a bounty contract to show you what this weapon could do was a real so i was really happy i was able to get that Mixed feelings for sure, because I don't like stealing contracts from people, but I needed to get a contract, so it was kind of a catch-22 type situation, but either way, we got ourselves another bounty contract, and you can see here, we are pack one, napalm burst, legendary, inside of tier two, and we got a mangler here to take down again. It's been nice that we consistently get the same bounties. I really do think that gives you guys a better, uh, you know, view of how the weapon works and how strong it is, because we're taking out the same bounty contract throughout so you can see just how the weapon increases in strength as we go through the match so i really do enjoy that 
Um, but again, I was pretty underwhelmed. We're pack one, legendary with Napalm Burst inside of tier two, and I was able to kind of strong arm the Mangler at the end here, but barely. Like, I almost died doing this. Got down to 50 health, which was kind of sketchy, but we managed to finish off that bounty inside of tier two. Like, I really do feel this weapon has potential to be to be really good, because when it hits, and it hits, you know, uh, hard, it definitely does a whole, huge chunk of damage for sure. So now it's time to put on a PAP 2 crystal and grab ourselves a bounty inside of tier 2 and see just what the difference is between the tier 1 pack a punch and tier 2 pack a punch with the bounty inside of tier 2. And again, lo and behold, we got really lucky and we got ourselves another mangler, which I was just so happy about. And you can see, again, we're pack 2, so we're doing a lot more critical damage and uh, for sure a lot more consistent damage to him. But again, I feel like some of the critical hits just aren't registering the damage that they should be. Um, when hitting on uh, the mangler and the bounty contract here So I'm not sure like I've been saying in the video if that's something that you guys are noticing or have noticed But let me know in the comments if you found that maybe with another weapon um, That it was just being inconsistent and then after an update that they managed to fix that and make it consistent um, I usually grab schematics to try and hand those out But as you can see we were under seven minutes to go and I had just made it into tier three to try and find you guys a mega abomination bounty contract and show you how this weapon performs with some crowd control inside of tier three so we were definitely running short on time and i didn't have time to try and find a schematic to hand out up another player at this point which is kind of sad i do feel good though earlier in the day in my run when i finished the event this morning i was able to hand out a schematic and self-revive to another player so that felt awesome now as far as crowd control goes with this thing max pack a punch uh legendary napalm burst inside of tier three your zombies, your standard elites, uh, the dogs, and the sprinters that are coming at you are definitely not going to be much of an issue. Um, the magazine is definitely something that I found myself fighting with. It's 40 rounds pack-a-punch, 20 rounds unpack-a-punch, and there is no option with this aftermarket conversion kit to increase your magazine size. So that is definitely something that is going to be a struggle. I feel like if you're going to be using this weapon, I would recommend, strongly recommend, that you run mags of holding with it just because the magazine sizes are so small. Now we managed to pick up a bounty contract inside of tier 3 and we managed to get ourselves a mega abomination which was absolutely amazing. But, but, there's a caveat here. I was definitely struggling with this weapon to deal enough damage to this mega abomination to, you know, even recommend that this would be something I would use. You can see right here, we're firing away into the electrical attack and that damage is just completely underwhelming. I'm not gonna lie, this was quite the fight. Uh, I don't know what was up with the zombies, but I literally had an endless stream of zombies coming at me. It was just nonstop. The second I engaged my Mega Abomination Bounty Contract in Tier 3, I had literally unstopping zombies coming at me. There's still one right there just behind the bus came out. Another time I'm shooting into his laser, and you can see, like, there's just not the damage. It's not, not getting done. You could definitely finish off this Mega Abomination, I feel, um, using this weapon inside of Tier 3, but it, it's going to take you a long time. The storm notification popped up. At this point now, I'm really starting to stress. This Mega Abomination damage is, is hardly moving. I'm not doing nearly enough damage to him. I've got him almost halfway done here. I got 13 and a half minutes left in the game completely. That's it. Again, firing into the laser attack and not able to uh, crack that face during the laser attack, which to me would make this weapon not necessarily viable against Mega Abomination bounty contracts or bounty contracts inside of tier three. Now, I will say I couldn't be wrong and I would be happy to have someone let me know in the comments. Maybe it was my build. Um, maybe it's something where I was shooting. Um, the, the after ammo wad I was using, let me know. But I definitely feel like myself, for me, uh, this weapon is not what I'm gonna be using to take in Mega Abominations out inside of tier three. So we dropped our juggernaut suit. We had a second Mega Abomination join the party. So I figured it was a perfect time to just try and get rid of all of these Mega Abominations, the zombies, my bounty contract. Time's running out in the match. There's now 12 and a half minutes to go. I'm literally fighting the storm and these two. My juggernaut suit ended the second I killed that other Mega Abomination. What timing, truly awesome. We got decent loot out of that, a sigil and um, epic ether blade which wasn't too bad or an epic ether tool so it was out oh, tool so it wasn't too bad about that we got some cash 
and a death perception can out of the other mega abomination and that was it it was time to get out of dodge i was literally running out of time you can see the storm was already on the move about to hit tier three so it was time to get out to an exfil and we made it out with the kv broadside featuring the aftermarket conversion kit and pushed our containment level up over 500 on our character that we we're pushing on to see how high we can get so let me know your containment levels down in the comments below and as always at the end of the video this is the weapon build for the kv broadside from mw2 with the aftermarket conversion kit and what it does so thanks for tuning in today and we'll catch you guys in the next one